uh, Rav, as well as uh, keeping our home safe today, you're actually going to be sharing some uh, very personal news, which is very brave of you, because I know it's going to help lots of other people too. Yes. Um, you know, for all my life, I've always known I'm a little unique in, in many ways. I think it's fair to say I've got obsessions in things such as tall buildings and populations and things that other people might not find particularly interesting, but I also struggle in a lot of situations as well, especially social situations. And over the last few years, I've been looking into the possibility of autism and whether that fits me. Rav, as always, you are so useful and helpful for so many of the people, but for the last few weeks, I know that you've actually been taking a bit of time to, to think about yourself, haven't you, and what's been going on with you? Yeah, I have, I have. Now, this is all stemmed from um, the last, well, a few years ago when I was diagnosed with dyslexia and dyspraxia, and I've been looking into other elements of neurodiversity, and one of those is autism. And I know that I've always been a little bit unique and perhaps a little bit different to a lot of people in social situations, for example, so I wanted to investigate what autism is and if it fits me. Yeah. You've been very brave in sharing your story so we can all follow you to see how you got on. Um, and we're going to do that just now. Everyone has their quirks. And for the last couple of years, I've been thinking a lot about why I behave the way I behave. I've always felt unique. I could name every muscle or bone in the human body, and most doctors can't even do that after their medical training. I have to go to the gym at exactly the same time every time I go. A lot of people will probably find that a little bit different. But I'm sure there's more to it, and I'm determined to finally get to the bottom of it. So to get a better understanding of why I do act the way I do, I've come to Cambridge to get tested to see if I do, in fact, have autism. There's a spectrum of autism. It's often characterised by difficulties in social interactions and communication, repetitive behaviour, focus on details and hypersensitivity to senses. Most people get diagnosed as children, but it's thought that many people can go more than half of their lives before learning that they are autistic as an adult. Professor Sir Simon Baron Cohen from Cambridge University is one of the world's leading experts in autism. Autism is a disability and it's all about social difficulties and communication difficulties. But also these are kids and adults, because it's lifelong, who latch onto one topic so there's almost um, laser focus on a particular topic. And is autism something that can be passed down generations at all? Yeah, we now know that autism is partly genetic. So in the general population, autism might be one in 50. But in families where there's already an autistic child, the likelihood of a new child in the family being autistic is one in three. But the fact that you can have identical twins where one is autistic and one isn't, means that it's not 100% genetic. That's staggering. Yeah, it's a complex picture. Are there any positives that can come from autism? Yeah. Autism is not just a disability, and that's where the word neurodiversity comes in. Autistic people love to focus on small details, mm -hmm. and in the right environment, that could be a real asset. Police officer Marcus Sost is a great example of exactly that. Three months ago, he was diagnosed with autism, but he hasn't let that diagnosis affect his work for Hertfordshire Constabulary. And as an ex-copper myself, I'm keen to hear his story. I think it helps me in my role because sometimes I can see things slightly differently. I will see maybe patterns of crime or incidents or things that will stick out and go, that doesn't seem quite right. Yeah. So that, that's sort of like my strength. How do you feel about rule or, or law breaking in general? Yeah. I had a strong sense of right or wrong as, as a kid and um, now it still is. Was there anything that you were struggling with? Police stations are naturally mm -hmm. busy. If I'm having a conversation with one person, we might go to another room just so I can focus on what they're saying rather than what's mm -hmm. happening in my ear. And that's hardest. When you're trying to listen to the radio and someone's talking at you, oh, that's so hard. That is exactly what happens on live TV. So I've got an earpiece yeah. with a director that's talking to me and giving me instructions and this, that and the other, whilst I'm trying to have yeah, a conversation. conversation yeah. And I can agree, it's incredibly difficult. Hearing so much of what you've just said was literally like looking in the mirror. 
and later today I am being assessed for autism. Wow. I, I wish you luck because it might obviously give you some answers like it has with me. Someone else who found those answers later in life is Christine McGuinness. Christine, lovely to see you. She was diagnosed with autism last year after she and her husband Paddy had learnt that their three children were autistic. What was it that made you explore your own journey with autism? I recognised a lot of the signs and symptoms in the children within myself. OK. And I got my own diagnosis in the 30s. How was it when you heard the, the words that, that you did fit autism? A huge relief. Honestly, I spent most of my 20s feeling very confused, a bit lost, and I kind of didn't fit anywhere. I was always very much a loner, and that continued. I have got a library full of excuses up here to not go to people's <laughs> weddings, parties, <laughs> any same. social situation. I avoid it, but... Actually, since my diagnosis, I've been so much better because now I'm not feeling so apologetic about myself. It was almost like I was sorry for existing, and that's how low it got me when I didn't understand myself. And you've just described everything that I feel. But you don't need to feel bad if you do need a bit of an adjustment. And most of the time, people are quite happy to help. As part of the autism assessment, I've already filled out some behavioural screening tests, which Professor Baron Cohen has graded. The next step to an official verdict is an in-depth one-on-one assessment. Things are going to get a little personal, so for the moment... A tough couple of hours later, and Simon is ready to let me know his diagnosis. So, you know, you came to find out if a diagnosis of autism fit. Mm -hmm. And I think it does. So, wow. you know, I don't know whether this comes as a surprise or a shock to you. Probably a bit of both. Like, I mean, a lot of what we discussed was was normal to me and probably not normal to other people. Yeah. But to actually hear it, it's right. still going to take a while to, yeah. to sink in, I think. You described that you would do almost anything to... <laughs> to avoid social plans, is that right? That's all true, and what I do find is when when I do work, as soon as I've finished, I'm, it just, it's like someone's just pulled the, the plug out and I've just got nothing left for the rest of the day. But it's got a lot of positives as well. Some examples you gave of being able to solve crimes that other police had missed mm -hmm. because you're focusing on a small detail that everyone had overlooked. That's an autistic strength, if you like. Well, thank you so much, Simon, it's been fascinated and draining. I can now, I can now say it openly. Well, it's been quite a day and I've had some genuinely life-changing news from Professor Simon, who said the words that I do, in fact, have autism. If you want to find out if you might be on the autistic spectrum, you can speak to your GP, who will be able to arrange assessments it can take a while to get there, but a diagnosis can mean access to support in school or the workplace. It's going to take me a while to fully digest and accept, but hopefully now I can finally understand myself. Right, Aww. thank you first and foremost for letting us follow your story there. I was just keeping an eye on the socials as that film went out. Just, this just... Um, um, came from, from Jane saying, fantastic, people understanding they are autistic later in life and making sense of who they are and understanding things that happen to them. This will help so many people. Thank you, Rav. And it feels like you've had some answers now from doing that? Yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's why I, I made the film, because I thought it would help other people. And it, exactly that, I finally got some answers. It finally makes sense. Yeah. All the things I've... I mean, we've known each other so many years and... and You've picked up on times when I've been struggling in, in certain situations and now that all makes perfect sense because it's how my brain is working is perhaps slightly different. Um, having those answers, yeah, it was, it really was. Because you did huge the, moment. the film about a, a week ago, and now it's your daily routine, is that making more sense to you? Everything that I do makes more sense. So that the anxiety that I get when I travel in, in certain ways on public transport, I've always had it my whole life. Yeah. And now it's like, 
I understand why. And, and Christine McGuinness, who I reached out to, to make that film, and she's been such a great help, she actually said, it will help you understand yourself. Yeah. And I couldn't, I couldn't make those words any better. You know, that's exactly what's happened. Yeah. This d diagnosis, Dr. Poonam, is, is key whatever age you are when it comes to autism. Absolutely, and I think it's so brave that you've shared that and it will encourage people to come forward. And I would say, yes, the process can take some time. Uh, appointment times can be kind of varied, um, but definitely speak to your doctor because as you have discovered, it offers a lot of clarity, closure, but also opens up lots of support to help as well. Yeah. Thanks, Rav. I know you're exhausted from that. <laughs> yeah, you. I know, it's tiring, isn't it? Thank you, buddy. Thanks so much for sharing that, Rav. I think it really shows that you've got to be patient with people. You don't really know, do you, what people are going through? Such a good point.